my camera bag for 2022. How's it going? Hope you're having a shit one. Today we're gonna to be talking about obviously what is in this thing, otherwise I wouldn't have titled the video that. So this is a Crumpler Kingpin full size. I believe they make a half size of these as well. The last time I made one of these videos, I recently just got a hold of the Crumpler Flying Duck, I think it was called. Weird name to call bags, honestly. Like. Anyway, and I actually just got this a couple weeks ago because I just needed a bigger camera bag. So I ended up going for this one. It's a lot bigger. And when I first got this bag, there were so many different clips on it, like different types of zips and clips. And there's a storage thing at the back and you put your camera in the side here. And there's a whole like magnetic clip here that unfolds this top part and then you have to zip it open. And then it's like a whole, whole big, black hole that, anyway. There's a lot going on here when I got the bag and I was like, for fuck's sake, like how many zips and clips and all this shit do you need on one bag? But honestly, like after I got used to it and I started packing some stuff into it and I got ready for this trip that I'm on right now, I'm actually currently filming this in the New York Airbnb I'm staying in right now. You know, I've really come around on it because I can fit so much stuff in it and it has magnetic things on it. And I love magnetic things, like look at this. Ready? One more time. Sick, right? Laptop goes in the front. Your little knickknacks go on the side here. You can have a portable charger that runs through the bag and connects out of here, which is really handy when I film my POV videos. I will get into that in a bit. You have your lens collection area here and the actual camera or another lens can go in the bottom here while you hold your camera. And then you have a travel section up here for maybe clothes, jackets, maybe you put filters in there, maybe a, a drone, I put a drone in there. Tripod clicks in here and you have a water bottle holder or other whatever needs to go in there part as well. Let's talk about my photography camera. This is an A7R 4 and I've had this camera for two years. Now I know the A7 IV has just been released and I'm not really that interested in that camera and I'm not getting that camera just because I don't have any reason to get rid of this camera. The only thing, or there's maybe two things I don't like about this camera is that the grip is a little bit small and there's like a half flippy screen on it, which I don't really like when I'm getting really low and trying to take a portrait picture. I wish it just flipped out like how the A7S does or the A7S 3 does or how the a7 IV now does with the flippy screen. But then I also have an opinion about those flippy screens, which I'll talk about with my other camera. But while we're still on the topic of the a7R 4 like I said, I have no issues with this camera. So this camera has held up with everything I've thrown at it for the past two years and never given me any problems whatsoever. I have these little uh, peak design clips on it for a camera strap I rarely use but I sometimes do use it when I'm skating around or I go in a helicopter or something like that. But I don't really use a camera strap because I just don't trust them, to be honest. I don't really care how good they are. I prefer the trust of my own hand and my own cognitive skills over a camera strap. By the way, in this camera are two 128 gigabyte SD cards. Battery life on it is amazing, especially since it's the photography camera. It's not working as hard as my video camera, which runs the same battery. Easily will do a whole photo shoot on one battery. Also in last year's video, I just got a hold of the A7S III. And now having that camera for almost a whole year later, I can say that this camera, which is currently what I'm filming on right now, is absolutely flawless. It is the best video camera or overall vlogging camera, camera in general I've ever had to use. It can just do everything. And it literally sees in the dark. It is actually perfect for what I need to do. It does every single thing I ever want it to do. It has a flip screen on it so I can see myself right now. I can just check that it's still recording. My SD card's not gonna run out of memory and my audio is working and everything like that. 4K, 100 frames or 120 or whatever. And the focusing modes on it, like how quick the autofocus is as well. I know it sort of helps when you have a decent lens on it, but compared to the A7S Mark II, that autofocus, I mean, you, you, you're honestly better off manual focusing with that old camera. So massive improvements there. Honestly, I have no complaints with the camera at all. There's not a single thing I would complain about on it other than the fact that the flip screen itself, I'm touching it right now, I can, this flip screen is a little bit dodgy and I feel like it's gonna break soon. Honestly, me not breaking something for an entire year 
is a pretty good effort, I would say. And this video, not only is this a what's in my camera bag for 2022, it's also a what's in my travel camera bag for 2022. As some of you may know, I left my home in Australia to come over to Europe and travel the rest of the world and get back to my life. And I also met a girl, her name's Faye. And I sort of left a lot of my life in Australia, which unfortunately also means I had to leave some of my camera equipment there too, because I can't just bring everything over with me. I have to be somewhat strategic about what I'm gonna bring. So let's talk about the lenses that I decided to bring over on my trip. This is a 70 to 200 F 2.8 G Master from Sony. And I talked about it in last year's video as well. I was a bit of an idiot because I did have one of these. It was really cool. It was wrapped with a Louis Vuitton Supreme, whatever lens hood. It was really cool. And for some reason, actually not for some reason, I know exactly what the reason was. I sold it because I wasn't really using it. And then about six months later, I regretted that decision. And I was like, why would I do that to myself? And then bought another one. Honestly, it's a beast fucking lens. If you rock up to a photo shoot with one of these, everyone's taking you seriously. Like, just look at this thing. Not only is the whole size of it impressive, look at all the little flicks and switches it has on it here as well. Like, there's like four different options for random shit that you probably won't even use. But it doesn't matter because look how cool it is. Bro, if you rock up to the tourist location and there's all these people standing there, and you rock up with this lens, they're gonna be like, all right, this guy means business if you have one of these. And also just quickly as a little side note, what I'm about to go out and buy or on my camera bag wish list is a teleconverter, a two times teleconverter that turns this lens into a 140 to 400 mil. And I wanna make a separate video on that once I get that teleconverter. Cause that converter is almost like having a second lens in your bag, but for a very, small amount of room. Next up, we have the Dark Horse, the 105 F 1.4 from Sigma. Look at the size of this lens cap. Look at the fucking girth of this lens. <laughs> Already those two lenses, the 7200 and the 105, take up most of the room in my camera bag and also give me back problems when I have everything in it and I'm transferring through airports and stuff. 105 F 1.4, what do I love about it? I love the compression of it. I love the bokeh of it. The depth of field this lens can create is second to none to anything else I've ever used. It looks just as insane as a 7200. Obviously, okay, Mike, that's great. The lens is awesome, but what's the catch? The catch is it's over two and a bit grand for a prime lens. So obviously you got to fork out quite a bit of money. Just one focal length, which I know for a lot of people doesn't really sit right with them because you're spending all this money to only be at one focal length. However, I do prefer a lot of prime lenses over zoom lenses just because of the quality you're going to get and you're able to stop down your aperture a lot more than a zoom lens because all the glass in this lens is working at 105 mil. So it allows it to be obviously a little bit more compact. It doesn't need to be compressed and moving around and everything like that when you have let's say a 7200 or a 24 to 70. So I'm sure if you followed my channel for a little while, you would have heard me talk about the 105 and how good it is. I've got a whole bunch of videos up here that I can show you that I use the lens in. So if you wanna go check those out and just see what this lens is capable of, I would highly recommend watching some of those videos. Next up, we have some other little prime lenses. Oh no, actually this one's not that little. This is a little one. This is a 65 F2 from Sigma. I actually talked about this again in last year's video. I uh, still got it with me still thought it was necessary for me to bring because sometimes there's situations where the 105 is just not really gonna quite work out for a situation. Incredibly sharp lens for the price you pay. I think they're about 800 bucks. It's Australian, I'm thinking, so it might even be cheaper in the US. I did show this off in last year's video, but I will show it off again. Coolest little gimmick about this is a magnetic lens cap. Got magnetic bag clips now. I've got magnetic lenses. Pretty cool. Oh, that was the lens cap. <laughs> anyway, and I also have the 35 F 1.2. Now this lens is an absolute beast. The 35 mil from Sigma is one of the best lenses you can buy when you're just starting out with photography. The 35 F 1.4 from Sigma is the 35 mil I'd actually recommend, especially if you're looking to get a prime lens. And also just quickly, I have so many lenses, fucking hell. 24 to 70 F 2.8 from Sigma and a 16 to 35 f 2.8 G Master from Sony, which is currently on my filming camera here, which honestly has been through hell and back with me. I got that lens when I first switched over to Sony in 2018. So I've actually had this lens for four years. 
I've broken it twice. <laughs> it's gone into repair. I got it, I broke it again, it went into repair again, uh, and then I now got it. And I recently slipped over and fell straight onto it in a recent POV video I made. Oh, fuck. So yeah, uh, it actually didn't break. <laughs> But I think even before me having that fall, I have been having some focusing issues with it a little bit. So when I zoom it all the way out to 16 mil or I zoom it all the way into 35 mil, it sort of hunts for focusing a bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, whatever. That's just life of a vlogger. It just, sometimes it just fucking, it falls over. My camera falls over. It just, it smacks something when I'm walking around. I might hit something like, you know, when I have my camera on me all the time, it just, sometimes it's going to take a couple knocks and usually the first thing to get hit is the lens. So I'm sorry, 16 mil. I do love you. Also great for photography. I went out and shot some street with it in Times Square while it was snowing. And oh my God, just have a look at some of these photos. They look like they're out of a video game for fuck's sake. All right, moving on. For the drone, I have a Mavic 2 Zoom. I have the Zoom over the Hasselblad one because I mainly just use it for filming and not really for photography. And to be honest, I haven't really been flying the drone all that often, as much as I used to, I guess. I've been way more interested in making the actual YouTube videos and getting more into the filmmaking side with the actual camera. So I haven't really found that me using the drone has become a regular thing for me. Maybe in the future, maybe some point this year, I might even scale this drone down to something a bit smaller, something a bit more compact, because I really don't think I need something this big anymore. I always think it's good to have a drone in your setup, and I have some ND filters for it as well when I'm filming during the day. Moving on to one of my favorite cameras, the smallest camera and one of my favorite cameras in my bag is this little thing. This is the Osmo Action from DJI and I film all of my POV videos on this little camera. It runs this little micro, I don't even know if it's gonna focus there, little uh, 128 gigabyte SD card in it. And this is the, oh, when I'm filming my POVs, I have it on this chest mount here, so let me just clip it in there and then I chuck it on the chest mount. So there'll be an ND filter on here onto my chest mount I don't actually run the door, as you can see here. There's actually a little weather sealing door on it. I just took it off and just left it because honestly, I don't need it. Um, even when I'm out shooting in the snow and the rain, like sometimes I'm a bit scared for this, that water's gonna go in, but <laughs> whatever. Because I run a Type-C cable. This honestly, it does look very bionic. Someone actually took a photo of me uh, while I was filming a POV with this whole thing set up and it looks very cyberpunk because I have all these wires and stuff coming out of me. And when I'm walking around actually doing my street photography, plugs into a portable charger. So now I have unlimited battery life. And why I prefer the DJI Osmo over a GoPro is that I can actually charge and film at the same time. Most GoPros can't do that to my knowledge. And also these are just better at nighttime. And this either goes in my pocket or into my camera bag, which I can now run through my bag because it has a cord through the bag. Yeah, there's just, there's so much going on there. There's actually so much to this and this has taken me a while to get it to this point. Okay, <laughs> as I'm walking over here, Faye's getting upset at me because this is not mine. This is what I want in my camera bag and what I'm about to go get is a Nan light. And this thing is just awesome. I think the Nan light's really cool because you can, uh, you can actually put it on things that are magnetic. So it's a more magnetic stuff. I really fucking love magnetic shit. Honestly, it just gets me hard. So I really want to get one of these. This is actually Faye's, but because I'm out with Faye all the time, if I ever need it, I just use hers, so. But what is in this black velvet bag, you might ask? Well, this is actually a Christmas present I got from Faye because I broke my other one, and it's a prism. Um, something I actually had in my camera bag and thought I was about to lose when I went through customs because they took it out. It was the only thing they took out. And I had to explain to them what it was. They're like, oh, you know, it's a little bit sharp. And I'm like, bro, come on. It's a photography, like, little, you know, gimmick thing. And I had to show them pictures of what I use it for and like a little behind the scenes video thing I had for it. <laughs> I think that convinced them to let me keep it. So yeah, I, next time I'm gonna put it in my suitcase when I'm going through an airport. But yeah, something I think is really cool to have with you, makes your shots a little bit more unique. We're almost there. I know you're probably wondering how the fuck does he fit all this in his camera bag, but I mean, I'm here in an Airbnb with it all, so it fits. <laughs> I don't know if you can see how big this bag is, but it is like, half the size of my body. Here, I'll, I'll actually, I'll wear it. It's fucking huge. All that fits in there. But what actually goes in the front is my laptop. This is my, actually, that's a good question about this Mac. 
This is my 2019 16 gigabyte, 2.3 gigahertz, eight core Intel serial number C1, no, I'm kidding. Uh, 2019 MacBook Pro, I wanna get the M1, haven't got around to it yet. Pretty good, it does give me a bit of stress sometimes and sometimes I wanna fucking Falcon punch it when I'm exporting a video from Premiere. Honestly, this is what I edit all my YouTube videos with, I edit all my photos with, and for the most part, it's a pretty good laptop. And also on the back here, still from last year's video as well. I really don't want to touch this too much because I'm currently uploading something. <laughs> I have a Velcro strap on there and this is a one terabyte SSD from Samsung. But I recently bought this and I'm about to go to the shop and get some Velcro for it. This is a two terabyte SSD from Samsung. But I'm finding that when I'm moving around and making a lot of content at once, one terabyte just isn't enough. So now I have a two terabyte hard drive, which I'm going to start using because each one of my photo shoots is roughly anywhere between 80 gigabytes to 250 gigabytes every time I go out and shoot. Because of the file sizes I get off the a7R 4 4K file sizes from this little bugger, and then 4K from the a7S 3 uh, When you add all that up and maybe some drone footage as well, yeah, you get a lot of gigabytes. I have about 150 million polarizers because I shoot a lot of cars, obviously. So I have in here, this is the polarizer for the 105 mil. Hello, lovely. It's fucking huge. Uh, 7200 polarizer, 65 mil polarizer, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and 35 mil polarizer. Actually, that's why I brought the 35 f1.2 because they all run the same thread size, 82 millimeter polarizer. So, yeah, that's very handy actually. Fuck me, we're almost done. Hang on, bear with me. Arguably one of the most important things you could ever have in your camera bag. And this is a media high-vis vest. Ready? Look how professional I'm gonna be. Before about 10 seconds ago, without this on, I look like the village idiot. But now, look how fucking professional I look. All right? You're moving out of the way for me now. When you see me walking around with this on, with that 7200, if I ever want to do something a little bit cheeky, maybe I'm somewhere that I shouldn't be. That's not me saying do it. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just stating a fact that if you did wear one of these, I think people would just take you more seriously. Do what you want with that information. And to finish it off, I got a whole bunch of other random shit in my bag. Spare batteries, this uh, vlogging tripod thing from Manfrotto, a notebook from Bentley, and a Bentley pen here as well which I just put all my notes in. All my video ideas are in here. Like this is the actual Bentley photo shoot, which is done now. The video with the green Urus, which is done now. It's cool to just like write down your ideas and maybe there's like checklists here that I have. I have red tape on it because I ripped it. I like <laughs> stuck it back together. Uh, it's just, yeah, ideas, just a lot of graffiti in there. There's some scribbles. There's some goals maybe in there. There's. If I need to write something down, just, I don't know, I, th I think it's really good just to have a notebook and just write your ideas, goals, whatever. I think it really helps you declutter your mind. When you're creative, I think there's a always a lot going through your head. There's always a lot of things that you wanna strive for, maybe the new things you wanna try and do. And I feel like sometimes it can just get so hectic up there, it's nice to just jot them down and write them down and actually see your ideas on paper and then go from there. Duct tape, SD card readers, dust puffer. Uh, this SD card reader is a Sartechi, which is everything that you've watched in this video is linked down below. I also have a regular Apple one with the A7S 3 my A7R4 and my Osmo. This takes a micro and two regular SDs so I can transfer all my footage from my photo shoots at once. That is everything in my bag. Yeah, like I said, my bag is really fucking heavy. <laughs> There's a lot of shit that goes in. And to be honest, I usually walk around with my vlog set up. So I've got the 1635 on with the A7S 3 I have a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus microphone. I forgot to say that as well. That's always on my camera with my vlog tripod. So usually all that shit that I just explained is in my bag. And then I'm holding my vlogging camera through the airport. That is what is in my camera bag for this year. If you did like this video, maybe you can leave a like down below or help me out by hitting subscribe. But with that all said and done, have a shit one and I will see you in the next one.